シューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバシューラバ
And another moment destroyed. Both win, but no one got cake. Is this guy plotting? What's his deal? It seems very intentional. Yes, I always love these segments. Kaguya wants to forgive. Oh, this time she's asking. She's on the other foot. Actually, I feel like it's a pretty humble move for Kaki to ask for advice. It's not a nothing. It's gotta be tough for her. Maybe just needs a soundboard. Okay, lies. That's a huge lie. Seems legit. Yeah, yeah. Right. The show calling itself out, maybe. Oh no. Oh no. This is. Oh my god, though. Oh my god, oh my god, this is life. This is just life. In a couple dispute, when you reach out to friends, their opinion on the situation and the side they take is 99% correlated with whose friend they are and who they're talking to, which is not at all surprising. I think it's just important to keep in mind. There are a couple of key ideas in there. One is that the, the events are going to be distorted by who's telling the story, of course. Assuming both people involved are really well-meaning, the conflict arose because of a different perspective. So reporting the perspective is already giving the, the listener, the friend, who's giving counsel a flawed or incomplete perspective. I think that's really important to keep in mind when trying to be honest and evaluate what happened, because that's the point, right? The point of conflict to a large degree is to find something that is good, you know, to find a resolution or identify problems. This kind of advice can, can be counterproductive because the answer is not probably that you're right about everything. I mean, there are cases when you are, but typically that's not true. But also there's this thing at play that I feel is just an endlessly pervasive problem where the people you know and the people who are close to you typically get assigned a higher humanity value, if that makes sense. So if a friend comes to me to talk about his girlfriend, let's say, there's something about his girlfriend, assuming I'm not also really close with her, that's kind of non-human. You know, it's just a nameless, faceless mannequin of a person. That's not really how I think logically but that's sort of the emotional space it occupies. Or at least there's a matter of degree there where she's certainly less of a full fleshed out human being that I care about than my friend. It's a little bit too easy to evaluate them along the lines of whether or not they are good for my friend. But that's sort of an objectification in a way. I say this because I've been the recipient of that kind of attitude. You know, I feel like when I've had conflicts in relationships, typically the response I find out about from my significant other's friends is almost universally the line, you know, just break up, which is incredibly frustrating as as someone who typically has a lot riding on, on the relationship and has a lot of emotional investment and attachment and genuine love or positive regard or whatever. Whereas the other person has sort of less skin in the game, or at least doesn't have my skin in the game. And it can be really infuriating to experience that, you know, that you've just been sort of categorized into this negative object thing that if it's not going well, you should just discard it, ignoring emotional history, ignoring the depth of the relationship, you know, ignoring not what is convenient, but would what would be a really high level solution where both people are really happy, you know? And so from that, I sort of don't ever want to participate in that. It's tricky because when people go for advice, there's kind of two things happening at once and you got to know where the weights are. People need you to take their side. A lot of times that's what people are looking for actually. It's like, oh yeah, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for listening to me, that kind of thing. So there's space for that. But I think it's a mistake to have that be the only thing. The other side of that is just actual thinking about a resolution and giving people the benefit of the doubt to a certain extent. Of course there are lines, right? But in my experience, it's rarely as clear a case as these conversations play out to make them. And just practically, in my experience, a lot of times in conflicts like this, the result is they get back together anyway. And even if you're just thinking from a strategic point of view, you've now made yourself against something that your friend has chosen. So you've now kind of put yourself more on the outside. And if the person you're counseling ends up telling their significant other that you advise them to break up or whatever, that creates sort of a rift with that person that might make gelling harder in the future. That's been the case for me. You know, I hear about these things and I'm like, that person said, what about me? We've hung out, you know, we were, we were pleasant. She went to that extent to verbally demean me. There's sort of no fully recovering from that, I think. So just for all those reasons, I think even though it's difficult, there's a more complex and nuanced perspective, I think that can be taken that I often see taken. Like I rarely see it taken actually. Just break up is sometimes the right answer, I think. It's not the case as often as people make it the case, I think. <laughs> 
Well, again with the chest talk. Those girls, huh? Birds. Can't trust them. Boy, <laughs> oh, he's got some, uh, yeah, he's got a lot, a lot of feelings about this. Yeah, no resentment there at all. Yeah, two people can be wrong at the same time. Very mature. Yeah, this just feels so much better to me. Like, what was my participation in this? Without blame, just thinking about it. She needs to pick a lane, first of all. That would go a long way. Yeah, I mean, what would work is that they just cleared the air, but, you know, this is this is Kaguya and Miyuki. It's the last thing they're capable of doing right now. Where's the maid in all this? Where's the maid in this conversation? She needs to pay for her crimes. <laughs> Yeah, another case where what it's about is not really what it's about, just like the cake. Gee, I wonder why he doesn't have a girlfriend times two. You know, blow over. One of the best things in their favor is their proximity. You know, they spend so much time together, it's sort of like whatever. Proximity is 90% of the battle. Bold of you. I like it. What? Where is this going? <laughs> Cue rom romantic music for this one finger. Her hand. What? <laughs> this is one of those things where it's like either real cute or creepy depending on how much you like the person. <laughs> cute or creepy depending on how much you like the person. I mean, after getting into bed together, <laughs> the lips thing is sort of like, okay. But emotionally, it's powerful. She's going to recreate it or not. Oh, that would have been a kiss, but she held back. She's saving it. Mutual victory, yes, correct. What is what is with these stalkers in the show? They're, everyone's lurking. Everyone's a lurker. Wait, did we just finish our... F oh, wait, it's Japan. This is the halfway point, not the full year. I learned my lesson from all those comments in my Arcadivia. <laughs> Telling me about Japan's schedule. Shigar and Miyuki wants to go somewhere. If only somebody would in invite me. Right, that battle, they never decided. My call back then was a mountain with somewhere to swim, like a lake. Yeah, that would actually be a really natural catalyst if, like, they make a group plan. That would work really well. It would be more fun, too. Take some of the pressure off. What a waste. What a waste! If only I could go back to high school. Actually, scratch that. <laughs> oh no. Isn't that cute? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Adorable. It is worst fear. Always. Because she's free, unlike you losers. <laughs> oh man, going big. I don't think he can go to Hawaii. Ooh, this is big, losing losing Chica for this. She was kind of cent central. She's the backbone of like this whole group, in a way. She creates the levity, the comfort people need. No one else in this group has it. One, yeah, you see one day. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Just lean into your adorableness, Miyuki. Sabotage her trip to Hawaii. Maybe you can destroy the airplane with a hairdryer. In reality, though, you had all year, all this time with her in the office, every day. What did you do with it? What will be different in the summer? It's exactly the same. You are what you practice. Hey, look at him being the leader. Mm. That's sweet. Why is this so unexpectedly cute and wholesome? Speaking of adorable, he just genuinely wants to hang out with people, it seems. I hope that's what it is. <laughs> uh, Hawaii cancelled. Yeah, that's an opportunity right there. I think the group thing is kind of crucial since they're so standoffish. It's kind of perfect because it allows them to be together and have moments alone without all the intense pressure of it being like a one-on-one. -on -one, having to fill every, every space with conversation or something. Yeah, let's go get around, huh? She's learning Spanish as well. <laughs> Wrecked. And she wins that argument. She wins the argument by crying. Yeah, there's just no defense against that at all. There's no way to win. 
He's <laughs> still shaking up. Taking full responsibility once again. That was nice. Sparing him from his emotional hell. Oh no, but I was a third wheel. It's not exactly what I was thinking. Oh, it's happening fast. I'm very excited for this. In the process of enlargement. <laughs> Oh man, does that mean what I think it means? Seems like we're heading into the obligatory anime beach episode or beach arc, <laughs> which if history is any indication is going to be amazing. Or we'll create uh, hell upon earth, Attack on Titan style, speaking of hell.